I recently bought the ePhoto 4500 watt 3 softbox lighting kit and wanted to give you a review of it now that I've been using it for a couple of weeks. Relative to using the clamp lights and umbrellas that I've talked about in other episodes, softboxes are a little bit more controlled. You can keep the light from spilling everywhere, unlike umbrellas. This is really helpful in a lot of situations, such as when you're trying to make a black background or kind of keep your subject away from the background. So let's dig in and see how they do. First, let's cover the good things about this kit. You get three lights, 15 bulbs, three stands, three soft boxes for only $190 US plus shipping. Wow. The lights feature independent switches for each of its five bulbs, a great way to fine tune the look of your scene. Each soft box has two diffusers for nice soft light. The quality of the lights and soft boxes is decent, definitely not top tier professional, but not bad. The sockets are ceramic and the plastic casing for the light heads fit together nicely. The soft box materials seem pretty solid. These lights put out a good amount of light. To give you an idea, at ISO 320, shutter speed 1 50th of a second, about 4 feet from the box, and these are pretty standard settings, you can work at an aperture of f4. And if you take off the inner diffuser, you can work at f5.6. If you turn on only one bulb, on the other hand, then you're down to working at f2. So this is really a pretty nice range, and it makes it easy to get a nice pure black background if you're into that look. Most importantly, these lights produce a great quality of light and the ability to direct the light where you want it without much spill. We're shooting in this case with the lights here. This is the most important feature of these lights. They're pretty much identical to the higher end pro quality fluorescent lighting kits that cost hundreds of thousands more in terms of the light that they put out. Then there are some not so good things about this kit. One of the bags that the softbox came in was ripped and unusable. While this isn't a huge issue because I won't be using it a whole bunch, it does make one wonder what kind of quality control they have for the products leaving the factory. When putting one of the light heads into the softbox, the center bulb socket came unglued and was literally hanging by the electrical wires. I was able to glue it back into place with some pretty strong plastic ceramic cement, but again, this is something uh, new and you shouldn't really have to do this with a new product. The design of the light in the softbox is a little bit strange. To get it so that the bulbs didn't touch the sides of the softbox, I had to mount the box diagonally. Now, while the bulbs are cool, compact fluorescent, they still get pretty hot since they're so big. I couldn't hold my hand on them for more than a second after they'd been on for a while. Mounting the box diagonally solves the problem with the bulb touching the side of the box, but it is a little bit awkward. These boxes are time consuming to set up and I'm not certain they would withstand frequent setup and breakdown. They're fine if you have a place where you can keep them set up, but if you're doing much location shooting, these probably are not up to the task without frequent repairs. In summary, these lights are quite a good bargain if you use them in a place where they won't need to be broken down or transported often. You may need to put some DIY effort into getting them set up the first time, but they put out some pretty awesome light and are very reasonably priced. Now here are a few notes about getting the most out of this kit. First of all, and probably most importantly, you need to custom white balance to get the natural color. Most DSLRs will do this. They are allegedly balanced 5500K, but I found that they, the files looked a lot more natural when you did a custom white balance versus just setting them to 5500K. We'll cover how to do that in a future episode. If you don't have the option to custom white balance because your camera doesn't support it, you might have to experiment with different white balances to see what looks best on your camera. Compact fluorescent lighting doesn't really throw light a long distance, but it does produce a very nice, soft, pleasing light. So you'll need to work with these lights in pretty close to your actors, probably four or five feet. If you're farther, you'll need to look at other, more traditional film lighting options. This is not just a limitation of this kit, this is really true of pretty much any fluorescent lighting in general. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for checking out the show. Subscribe above if you'd like to get future episodes. Hit us with questions or comments down below, and we'll talk to you again soon.